This video shows how to troubleshoot Ethernet network connection. So the first step of getting a Hinkspix Pro or Alphapix Evolution or an Alphapix Classic controller onto your network so it can be sent data or configured is to hook it up to your network. Now that network can vary. It could be a home network, a business network, or directly to a computer. So in our example, we will be using a direct to computer. Our computer has two network interfaces and we'll be hooking it up. Now, the first key thing to be aware of is these are Ethernet connections. And we have some other videos that explain what Ethernet is in comparison to the other technologies, such as these. These are RS-45 based connections. This is an older, slower technology, but also uses cat5 network cable all right one key piece that will help you in many cases determine the difference between them is the lack of lights on the corner so let me just show you those lights those lights are located right here you can see them flashing so if i unplug you, you'll see the light come off if i plug this network connection back in you can see it flashing with the status of yellow or orange and that indicates it's sending and receiving data You'll notice that these do not have that. Now, this is not an absolute guarantee. There are some devices that use Cat5 that are not Ethernet that do have these, but that's not typically the case. So, this is an RS-45 DMX 1990-style connection. This is a differential receiver, and it is RS-45 based with the differential signal. So, these do not hook up to these or these. Now, we also have two jacks on the AlphaPix Evolution or Hinkspix controller, and those do allow you to daisy chain controllers. So you can take your signal from your computer, run it in here, hook up an additional cable, and then go on to an additional controller like this. So you can daisy chain them from one to another. All right. Now, you'll notice that when I have this cable and it is not plugged in at the other end, you'll notice that there is no green status light there. That means that we do not have an electrical connection over this Cat5 cable from this jack to some sort of network or PC. Now, that can be a variety of reasons. First is never use your own personally made up cables. I know you've been a network engineer for 400 years and you're perfect at it, but we highly recommend factory-made cables. We've seen many problems with custom-made cables. If you're not sure, swap out that cable, put in a factory-made cable, and just test it. All right, the next is you may not be plugging it into the right device. Again, don't plug it into these or plug it into a Lightarama controller. Lightarama controller, if it's a legacy AC-based controller, like a 16-channel unit, or a CCB, CCP, that kind of thing. Those are old technologies based on RS-45. And you'll notice they don't normally have the status lights in them. So don't plug them into those. Now, if you do need to use a mixed network of Lightarama and a modern Ethernet network with E131 and other related protocols, you can do that. That is not a problem. And we do have videos and information about how to do that. All right. Now, we've got a link here, and this cable right here is going to my computer. And uh, let's just show you a little bit of how we have that set up. Now, I should mention that this controller, you'll see, has an IP address. Uh, and it may be a little hard to see here, but it's 192.168.0.50, which is the factory default IP address. Now, if your IP address needs to be different, for your particular network, you can change it. We do have videos for every controller, including the Hinkspix Pro and the Alphapix Evolution Classic controllers. So uh, you can also use DHCP addressing. If you have a network um, where you have an assigned address from a server, you can use that too. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our configuration. Now, first, I've can of course see here, you can see I have the controller set up, but we kind of skipped a spot. And that has to do with configuring the network. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up control panel and uh, let's just back up a few levels here. Let's go to control panel. And this is on a Windows 10 machine. 
And if you don't have Windows 10, or maybe under Windows XP or Windows 7, your settings may look slightly different, but they're generally the same. If you have a Mac, use whatever it is you use on a Mac appropriately uh, to do that to make configurations. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to do here is go to Network and Internet. Then we're going to go to View Network Status. And that's going to allow us to see that we have two networks on this computer configured. One is our internal uh, business network here, domain.net. And this unidentified public network is this cable right here. So we're going to go into adapter settings. And we can see that. So there's our network. You can see that there's a little plug right there. Now, you'll also see that there's a little plug here for the Ethernet. I'm going to unplug that. And you can watch this. See how there's an X and it says network cable unplugged? dead giveaway we don't have a connection plug it in bang look at that it's identifying and it will connect now what you can do in this particular case we have two networks this pc has a network connection to one network which is our business network could be your home network uh, or it could also have a network connection to your uh, controller a common solution is one of these is wireless and one of them is wired and you may have your wireless hook up to your home network and you're wired to your business I mean to your controller network now in this case what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna make this easy. I'm gonna rename this I'm just gonna call it uh, e 131 uh, network all right we're gonna put in some details that allows me to change it all right that just helped me out identify that this is my business network and this is my uh, E131 network. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in and right click it, select properties. And your computer may not require this. This is a business computer and it does require change authorization. And you'll notice that I've unchecked IP6. That's not necessary in this case. And we've gone down here, we have TCP IP. I'm going to select Internet Protocol version 4 properties. And you can see that uh, we've set an IP address. Now I'm going to set this back the way we'd normally have it. So normally when you would click this, it would obtain an IP address automatically. That means DHCP, where it's going to get the IP address from somewhere on your network. Uh, in this particular case, we are going to configure it as a personal network specific to our controllers. So that all the data stays on one network with all the cables or controllers, not on my home network or business network. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to put in the IP address, uh, 192.168.0.1 one for example now again this controller is 192.168.0.50 by default now keep in mind that you do need to have a unique IP address for every controller so if you have multiple controllers and they're all the same uh, and each controller has a different default IP address so the Hinkspix has a different IP address than the Evolution and check the web interface I mean the OLED display for the number of the IP address. Um, now, each one will need to have its own IP address. So what you may want to do is boot it up, go in, change the IP address. You can either do that through the screen, we have videos for that, or you can do it through the web interface, change each one to a unique one. You might change it to 192.168.0.55, for example. Okay, now, every device on the network needs to have its own unique IP address. That includes the computer. So the computer is another device on the network. So think of each of these controllers as you bring them on as houses on a street. So your street is what's called a subnet. It's a section of a street that has unique addresses. And as we know, each house must have its own unique house address. No house can have the same address. So that means again that each controller needs to have its own unique address and because your computer is just another device on the network you need to have a unique IP address for that in this particular case we're gonna set it as one and we're gonna go down here you can see that Windows is smart enough to go ahead and say that we probably should set the subnet mask at 255, 255, 255, 0. What does that mean? Well that means that all these three other numbers 192, 168, 0 have to be within one subnet. That means this number can be between 0 and 255. Now, your home network may be different. It may have 10.0.0. something or something like that. 
All right, now we don't need a default gateway. Default gateways are involved with routing data out of the network, and that's beyond the scope of this particular video. We also don't need a DNS server because we're just directly connecting to each device using its dedicated IP address. Uh, and so a DNS server is so that you can resolve a name, such as google.com, and allows you to find the IP address of the device. We're going to be referencing everything via IP address, so we don't need a DNS server. I'm going to click OK and close. Now, we can also bring up by going to start, then typing the letters CMD, Charles Mary David, or the command prompt. Uh, this is a very useful tool, and there's several tools in here. And the first is we can do an IP config. IP config allows you to see the IP addresses. Now, you can also see here my Ethernet Ethernet adapter. Remember that domain.net right here? There it is right there, and there's its IP address. You can see that its network is 192.168.10.187. Also with the same subnet mask, and then this E131 adapter, which is our network card for the wired network for controllers, is 192.168.0.1, which we just set. All right, now another tool you can use is ping, and this is an extremely useful tool. Ping is simply a tool that you say, hey, are you there? We type ping, and then we put in the IP address. Now, we want to check to see if we can ping the IP address of this controller, which is showing as 192.168.0.50, which you can see here. I press enter, and you can see that I get a reply. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and add a dash T. Now, this may vary depending upon your operating system, if you're on Mac or Linux, but on a Windows system, this always works the same. I'm just going to add a dash T at the end here, which constantly pings. And what we're going to do is here, take a look at some things. First of all, you can see that there's a little bit of data going across. That's the signal right there pinging the controller. The controller is hearing the ping from the PC and responding, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And that's what you see here. So let's go ahead and unplug this cable. And we can see it stops responding. And in just a moment, we'll get no reply. And it says request timed out. So if you cannot ping the controller, you will never be able to access it via its web interface or send data inside of a sequencing application. So this is a fundamental test if you're having a problem. If you can't ping, you can't send data. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And by the way, you can plug these into either one of these. It's a network switch, so either one's fine. All right, and in just a moment, it'll link up. You can see here, we have a green light. Everything's good. So now you can see that the ping has restored. That means we can access this controller. At this point, everything checks out. So the main keys here were check for the status light, if you've got that, proceed with the IP address configuration. Then, if you get that, go ahead and issue a ping command to what is the IP address you believe this controller is. Again, look at the screen to see what its IP address is showing. And then, proceed if you get a ping. So, we've got a ping. So now we're going to go to the web interface. So we just bring up a web browser. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just bring up an empty one here. And so what we'll type is 192.168.0. You can put even three zeros. And 0 0.50, for example. And let's just try this again. 192.168.0.50. Okay. And for some reason, it's resolving to 40. I'm not sure what that is. Let's try refreshing this one. Okay, this is working. All right, so we have 192.168.0.50. So I'm just typing that in the bar at the top in the controller and the web browser configuration. Now, we do recommend Google Chrome. We do not recommend Internet Explorer, which is ancient by all standards. Um, and Google Chrome, very good browser. Also, common problems here. If you're having a problem accessing it, you may have either some sort of filtering software, such as web browser software, address bar software, um, search engine software, something installed in your browser here. Uh, so for example, if you go to Google and it doesn't look like Google and there's something weird up here, um, you may have um, the browser add-in or some other problem. All right. 
Now, we're at the controller. You can see its IP address is shown here. You can rename the controller. And IP address settings can also be made down here. So if we were going to add additional controllers, we probably would want to give each one our unique IP address because they, again, all need unique IP addresses. And so in that case, we might change this to 55 and update that. And you can see it'll be rebooting. We'll see it here. So let's, we can see here. It's entering normal mode, and now it's 192.168.055. So it's now configured uh, at its new IP address. So just to recap here, processes are cable only to Ethernet connections. If it doesn't have lights on it, probably not Ethernet. Next step, after you have a status light and it is linked up, configure the IP address on your computer. Next step, configure and make sure the IP address is working by using the ping command, P-I-N-G space, and then the IP address of the device you expect to access. Then, after that's working, go ahead and access it in the web browser. Uh, now, if for some reason you can ping the controller, but you can still not access it, either you have a web browser issue, or you could have antivirus or firewall or other blocking software, which is sometimes suspicious, of devices on your local network as opposed to over the public internet. Okay, so you can see here we've got it. We changed our IP address to this new address, and now we can add on another controller and it would not conflict. So we hope this has been helpful on configuring your networking in AlphaPix or EZLights slash Hinkspix controllers.